Good Wednesday morning, Marion, Kentucky. It's almost Halloween. Tomorrow afternoon will be the annual trick-or-treat on Main Street. Looks like a slight chance of rain, so uh, hopefully it doesn't spoil the fun, but you might want to plan ahead and have something for those trick-or-treaters to stay dry with. We have a lot of news to get to uh, this morning, but first... I want to remind you that Crittenden County Clerk Daryl Tabor says early voting opens tomorrow on Thursday. Anyone who wants to avoid a crowd uh, on Election Day can come out and vote early. You can do that out at the Crittenden County Office Complex on Thursday, Friday, or Saturday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Save time. Vote early. Avoid those lines. Well, the big news in town this week has been the groundbreaking uh, in downtown Marion for the $20 million Judicial Center, a formal ceremony to kick off demolition of the existing courthouse, which was built in 1961 for $161,000, and the new construction of a modern Judicial Center was held on Tuesday on the courthouse lawn. Read all the details in this week's newspaper. For now, let's hear from Judge Brandy Rogers, who was on the committee that helped design the new Judicial Center. She was uh, one of the speakers at Tuesday's groundbreaking event in Marion. So I'm here with Judge Brandy Rogers. And uh, Judge, we're uh, here at the reception. Things are winding down after this wonderful ceremony uh, on the courthouse lawn. Uh, I hope, I hope everyone can hear you because it's kind of noisy here in the venue, with, uh, but a nice, nice post event reception and, and everyone uh, had a great time. Talk a little bit about, you know, some of your, uh, the things that you mentioned, uh, your remarks while you were speaking there at the podium during the ceremony. And then as well, a lot of questions about what's going to happen with some of the, the bricks, the memorial bricks that are there. Mm-hmm. Um, so thank you, Chris, for being here and being a part of this big uh, day for our county. Um, the building is being built as a hundred-year building. It's it's a large, large budget, but it's meant to serve our citizens for the next hundred years and to do it securely, safely, and have the adaptability for technology and our future generations. So this is no small endeavor. It's not a band-aid. It's not. Uh, hold over. This is an opportunity for us to see an investment in our community that will be a permanent fixture for the next hundred years. And I'm very proud that our community is getting getting this because it takes a lot for it to happen. And Crittenden is such a small town, but such a wonderful space that we um, we deserve an opportunity for every citizen to feel safe and um, have access to to the law when they need it. Well, if this one, if this one does uh, live for 100 years, it would be the longest in service because I, the, uh, the one that lasted the longest was 91 years. It was built, I think, in 1871. And then the courthouse, the existing courthouse that's getting ready to be torn down was built in 1961. And it's been in service, what, 63 years now? Yeah. Well, and that one was built conservatively on um, sure. a small budget, which is understandable because mm-hmm. our county had to share in that. What did the judge say? $163,000? Total. Yeah. Uh, and it was a very ambitious project, and they cut corners where they had to, but they had to make it work for both the county and the judicial part. This building is built with steel. It's built with the idea that to be able to withstand any potential needs of the future and any potential uh, problems. So it is a giant, like, you know, national endeavor. It's not like it's not like a building we're just throwing together. It is program requirements that will see it built securely, safely, and for the long haul. And this is being paid for by the legislature and the justice cabinet, right? Yes. So this is not our local dollars at work. Um, the legislators allocate a certain amount of the budget, judiciary budget, for buildings. And if it wasn't our courthouse, it would be another courthouse. We had to fight to get moved up the ladder, so to speak. But they allocate a certain amount of the state's budget that goes to the judiciary for the project. This is money coming from that. Everything will be reimbursed to the county locally. No one's local tax dollars will specifically, you know, pay your taxes. They go to the state. The state will use your money. It's still still tax dollars, but it's nothing local that will increase our taxes here or have any effect on your day-to-day. 
one of the biggest questions I'm hearing is what's going to happen with the memorial bricks? Very good question. And I uh, have some family that have bricks there as well. So I am uh, passionate about what happens to them. We worked with the sorority to see what the best potential thing moving forward would be. And we're recreating them. They're going to line the sidewalk that goes around the whole square. And every brick that is currently represented will be replicated in a new brick. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is the cost to pick them up and save them and store them was so much more than just recreating them to get new bricks and stamp them. And then we'll also be a uh, part of the PDB, a part of the project fund is to buy blank bricks that will be stored outside at the county's property offsite so that if anyone else wants to buy bricks in the future, they'll get a chance to do that. And we will see that the sorority is assisted by the county in putting, continuing their effort and all the bricks will still be there. All right. Well, thank you, uh, Circuit Judge Brandy Rogers. And uh, hope we all... Uh, are in business and, and, and their professions long enough to get in this building. It yes. Took, it like, uh, Judge William, uh, retired Judge Williams said it was 29 years ago, I it believe. Was. She said the first letter she wrote to uh, to Frankfurt, to the administrative office of the courts, saying we needed a new courthouse Yeah, here. <laughs> I agree. I can't wait for our very first day to serve the public. Yeah. So. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. In some local election news, Kelsey Berry has pulled out of the race for Marion City Council after she was determined uh, to not have lived in the city long enough to run as a write-in candidate. Now, Kelsey tells me that she does plan to run again in two years when she'll have an opportunity to be on the ballot. It's tax time in Crittenden County. Sheriff Evan Head says tax bills will go in the mail tomorrow. It's about a month earlier than the traditional mailing time, but uh, it's by design. Now, let's hear from Sheriff Evan Head. Taxes are being mailed today uh, through the postal system, so they will be coming to your mailboxes in the next few days. Taxes are available to be, to be paid on Friday, November the 1st. Uh, you do not even have to have your tax bill if you wish to uh, pay them in the office. You can come in and give us your name. We can look it up. We did ask for a poll, and the response that we received from most people, we only received two, uh, most people was favorable for November collections. Several of the farmers had mentioned that they enjoyed getting the 2% discount. So just because we did move collections to November does not change. You still get a full month of 2% discount. They will go to face value starting in December, and then penalties will begin starting in January, uh, just as it has been before every time. It just allows the people, especially the farmers, their crops are coming in. Some of the people that are landowners that get out-of-state hunting leases, they've got their lease money. So we felt like it was favorable to do what the, what the people in the county wanted that are paying their taxes. I'd like to remind you that the Crittenden Press is your election headquarters. You can find out how you can be election ready. Check out this week's newspaper for all the last-minute news on the local election. Now let's hear from one of our sponsors. Nikki Conger is a write-in candidate for Marion City Council. The 30-year-old is seeking her first term on the council. She asked voters to write in her name for the race November 5th. Paid for by Nikki Conger. Randy Dunn asks for your vote next Tuesday, November 5th. Dunn is a current member of the Marion City Council seeking re-election to that post, paid for by Randy Dunn. In obituaries, Dennis Joe Nesbitt, 81, of Jackson, Tennessee, formerly of Marion, passed away October 26 at the hospital in Jackson. Gilbert Funeral Home is in charge of arraignments. Faye Carol Kreider, 82, of Marion, passed away Saturday, October 26. Myers Funeral Home in Marion is in charge of arrangements. And Nancy Diana Sabedra, 69, of Marion, died October 26 at her home. Myers Funeral Home is also in charge of her arrangements. Randy Dunn asks for your vote next Tuesday, November 5th. Dunn is a current member of the Marion City Council seeking re-election to that post, paid for by Randy Dunn. In local sports... Crittenden County High School senior Carly Porter is player of the year in the second region volleyball as chosen by the Kentucky Volleyball Coaches Association. Uh, Crittenden County High School coach Savannah Taze was also named coach of the year. 
Unfortunately, the Lady Rockets lost their opening round game Monday in the regional tournament against Christian County. That was down at Hopkinsville, and it ended an historic season for the Lady Rocket volleyball team. You can read a lot more about their uh, success in the Crittenden Press this week. Later in the week, Junior Pro Jamboree will be Saturday and Sunday. The Junior Pro Crittenden County football team finished third. That's the fifth and sixth graders uh, in that West Kentucky Junior Pro League, finished third. And the third and fourth graders finished fourth in the regular season. And both teams will be seeded appropriately for this weekend's postseason playoffs, which will be over at Trigg County. On Friday night, the Rocket football team hosts Callaway County to close out their regular season. And this will be a senior night for the Rocket football team. Kickoff at 7 p.m. In outdoors, the week-long Kentucky Wild Turkey Shotgun season ends Friday. And one week from Saturday, the modern gun white-tailed deer season will be in full swing uh, across Kentucky. And there will be a lot of traffic showing up here in Crittenden County as it's a very popular outdoor sport here. H&R Block will have a ribbon cutting ceremony at 10 a.m. Friday as it celebrates the grand reopening at its new location, 215 North Main Street in Marion. Throughout the day, there will be refreshments, giveaways, and a bounce house for kids. And one last thing you'll want to put on your calendars if you're a veteran. The Crittenden County School District will be having its annual Veterans Day celebration. That will be on Monday, November 11th. Uh, this year will be out at Crittenden County Elementary School, something new. It's normally in the gym, but this year it will be out at the elementary school starting at 9 a.m. So make plans to attend that. This has been Chris Evans reporting for the Crittenden Press.